Well, we continue our look this week at a good night's sleep and what might be keeping you from getting one. It's the time of day when we're supposed to be able to turn off our brain, turn out the light, and fall asleep in silence. Peace and quiet at last. But bedtime can be a nightmare if you're sleeping next to a snorer. And the person who's doing the snoring might actually be suffering from a serious disorder. As CTV's Andrew Johnson shows us, it often goes undiagnosed. <laughs> If that sounds familiar, you must be sleeping next to someone who snores. We're sorry. Experts say it's the reason more and more couples are sleeping in separate beds. But as hard as snoring can be on a spouse, it can actually be worse on the snorer, who may be suffering from a serious disorder. I slept with my eldest daughter one night at, when we were visiting my father, and she said it sounded like sleeping with a semi-truck that kept stalling. Darcy Nielsen got the wake-up call when her husband started sleeping on the couch. He'd been complaining about her snoring for years and insisted she would actually stop breathing. You were still trying to breathe, but your airway was completely closed. Doctors say sleep apnea, the most common sleep disorder, is massively underdiagnosed. If you have it, like Darcy, you'll snore a lot. You'll sleep a lot, but you'll still be exhausted. Commerce, education, and the, um, uh, what's the third one there? Let's see. Remember Rick Perry, the Republican presidential hopeful, went blank during a 2011 debate. And let's see, I can't. The third one, I can't, sorry. <laughs> Oops. And this Quebec politician was having trouble staying awake in the legislature. Apparently both men have since discovered they suffer from sleep apnea. So just put your uh, arms out like an airplane. You can find out for sure by visiting your doctor and then a sleep lab like this one at Royal Jubilee Hospital. Oh, you hit the hospital. Really? Yep. The patient arrives at about 9 at night to be outfitted with equipment that will monitor their heart, muscle movement, brain waves, eye movement and breathing. Once I'm all wired up for testing, which takes about 45 minutes, then it's lights out. And I try to sleep. The lab tests 500 people every year and at the end of this month will double its capacity. Now you can see if you notice a difference. Darcy Nielsen didn't need the sleep lab. She took home a monitor from Provincial Sleep Group. She's being treated with a nasal CPAP that delivers pressurized air to keep her airway open. Nowadays we've got heated humidifiers, we've got heated hoses, we've got small masks for patients that are very comfortable. So our compliance rates are now usually up to 80, 90 percent. I was shocked. I thought the thing would sound like Darth Vader. And in fact, when I told my girlfriend that I was getting it, she texted me something about, Luke, I am your father. Is that good? Now, Nielsen starring in Return of the REM Sleep, opposite her husband, who has returned to bed. A happy ending uh, bedtime story, Andrew. Now, we know uh, that REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep is the most important phase of sleep uh, over the course of the sleep spectrum. Are people uh, who have sleep apnea getting any of it? Hudson, experts say people suffering from sleep apnea who will stop breathing, by the way, for up to 30 times an hour, sometimes get very little REM sleep, meaning for most of the night they're not dreaming. And what happens is once they get some kind of treatment and begin to get a full night's rest, they're going to have what's called a REM rebound because they've been so deprived they'll dream a lot. They'll also wake up feeling great. Tomorrow in the final part of our sleep series, we'll show you how what you eat, drink, sleep on, and what you're doing before bed can do to the quality of your shut-eye. All right, Andrew Johnson, thanks. You're welcome.